Welcome back Wealth Giants to another episode if you're new to the channel. My name is Ryan. Welcome to the channel. In today's episode we're going to go over the third financial statement. I've already made a video about the income statement, the balance sheet, and today's episode is about the cash flow statement. I also provide a free resource down in the description below. It kind of breaks down the cash flow statement so that it helps guide you even if you're not watching this video. Now, I will also place the other two cheat sheets down below along with their corresponding videos. Keep in mind though, I am not a financial advisor. Everything that I provide for you in these videos is stuff that I've accumulated over the years and I'm providing for you guys in video form. Uh, with that, if you're new to the channel and you wanna follow my financial journey and learn from me, please consider subscribing by hit the subscribe button down below. Also, if you wanted to support the channel, smash the like button and let's go ahead and go over to the computer now. Look at the cheat sheet that I provided along with a example cash flow statement. Let's go ahead and go. All right, so this is the cash flow cheat sheet and I'm just gonna navigate this real quick for you so that you know what to look for and how it all works and stuff like that. And then we'll go ahead and use this to look at a cash flow statement. So right here at the top is the cash flow statement title. And then to the left, you have your different terms and categories. So there's four categories that you wanna look at, the operating cash flow, investing cash flow, financing cash flow, and end cash position. And then down here, you got a little subcategory that's important, which is the free cash flow. And we'll go more into that later. And then you have your subcategories inside of it. And then you have the definitions of everything in the center. And then things to look out for over to the far right. Okay, so today we are going to use the cash flow statement of Apple. And the reason why I want to use Apple is because I used it for all the other ones. And it just makes it easy to follow and all that other stuff. So today we're going to look at it in annual. And keep in mind that all these values are in thousands. So you see 80 million here. This is actually 80 billion because you multiply it by a thousand. Okay, and as you can see, those key categories are operating cash flow, investing cash flow, financing cash flow, and cash position, and then free cash flows down here. There's another group of things down here. We're not gonna to focus too much on them because they're kind of self-explanatory. We will go a little bit into CapEx and explain what that is because that kind of helps you understand how to calculate the free cash flow. So let's go ahead and look at operating cash flow, okay? So operating cash flow is how the company brings in their money. And we can see that in here in the definition is the amount of cash generated by the company's normal business operations, okay? And then the first thing that you're gonna see here is net income from continuing operations, okay? And this is found on the income statement, okay? So the trailing 12 months income statement right here, you can go and look at that, and you're gonna see this in the net income portion of that statement, all right? And so that's just how much money the company netted in that period of time. So in this case, it's the trailing 12 months. Don't have to go into too much definition about this, but something that you wanna look at, and you can see this here, is good to see increase year over year. So as you can see here, from 2017 to 2018, they increased, then it decreased, but then it increased massively in 2020. And in the trailing 12 months, it's not too far behind, but we're still at the beginning of the year, so at the time of recording this, so that's pretty good. So going to the next portion, uh, depreciation, amortization. Keep in mind that this is where the money is going. So balance sheet is talking about the assets versus liabilities. Cash flow is talking about where the money is going. And when you're looking at depreciation and amortization, okay, that isn't really a cash expense. And on the balance sheet, we took it off of the asset category. Well, here on the cash flow statement, we want to add that back because it's not really a, an expense to the company, okay? Just because your vehicle lost value doesn't mean you had to pay that loss in value to somebody. It's just lost in value. So you would add this back onto the cash position because it is still in their bank, you can say. Now deferred taxes, that's kind of self-explanatory. This is just taxes that's been deferred for a period of time. Now, normally you would see this as a positive because they're deferring taxes, but Apple's been paying a lot in taxes, okay? So if you were to go, say for example, to the balance sheet, and we're gonna just go here real quick and go to the liabilities, 
total non-current liabilities, break this down, and here you have non-current deferred taxes. Back in 2017, they had 31.5 billion deferred, and if you come back to the cash flow statement and go back down to deferred taxes, in 2018, they paid the pretty much that and then some in taxes. So that is why it is negative there and why it's still negative to this day is because they are paying back those deferred taxes, okay? Next, you have your stock-based compensation. If you wanna know what that is, you can always come back to the cheat sheet and look at stock-based compensation. Okay, these are shares given to employees but cannot be sold for a time. So basically, if I come back here, Apple has issued shares to its employees as compensation or bonuses or however they perceive it. And they have $6.6 .6 billion worth of shares issued to their employees. But these employees cannot redeem them. And the reason why is because they are under contract to stay with the company for a period of time or other particular reasons. Now, if you look at 2020's cash flow statement, it's 6.8 and in the trailing 12 months, it's 6.6. .6. That means that 220 some odd million dollars worth of shares have been issued to the employees. So those employees have control of those shares. Therefore, it is taken off of the cash flow statement. All right, so other non-cash items. We're not gonna go into depth in this because it's mostly trying to find out, okay, do I wanna buy into this company? If I do, then you would go further into depth about the other non-cash items, okay? So don't look too much into this unless you actually plan on buying. Also, I'm not gonna to worry too much about it because it's only 406 million versus the cash flow of 80 billion. So I'm not gonna worry too much about that as of yet. Now, it is still important to know this stuff, but only look into it if you actually feel like you really wanna buy into it, but look into it so that you're not blindsided in case you buy into it and find out that was a very important detail to know. And you'd find that information in the 10Ks and 10Qs. So now we have change in working capital. Let's go back and check out what that is, okay? Change in working capital is right here and we're looking at it right here. This is working capital in current assets minus current liabilities found on the balance sheet. Now, this actually breaks down into a lot of subcategories. So this is just, I put it on the cheat sheet so that you can know exactly what this is exactly. But then remember that the things underneath it are the subcategories. If I was looking at change in receivables, okay, so what, what is a receivable? Well, a receivable, you can come back to the cheat sheet. Receivables is money owed to the company but cannot be counted as income yet. And the reason why is because they haven't physically received the money yet. They are waiting for those companies to pay them back. Also, you want to focus on the keyword change, okay? So it says change in receivables. It's not receivables. Now, receivables you'll see on the balance sheet, but change in receivables is different. And the way you would calculate this is receivable end of year minus receivable beginning of year. And that will give you your change in receivables. And the information you want to kind of look out for is if positive, this means that the clients are paying debt faster than clients are taking it on. So they're paying back their debt and Apple isn't taking on new debt from their clients. Next we have change in inventory, which is right here. And it's the same thing, change. So this is negative. Now, what does that mean if you wanna know? Okay, if negative, the company is buying more inventory than before. All right, now if it's positive, they're buying less inventory. And same thing with receivables, if, they're, if it's negative, then clients are taking on more debt than they are paying back. So next we have change in payable and accrued expenses. Okay, and this is positive, but you can also see that the prior years were negative and then positive and positive. So what does positive mean? But also what is a payable? Well, payable is the money owed but not paid to creditors. So this is typically added back on to the cash flow statement. And this is because they still have that cash. So it's still a positive attribute to their cash flow. However, they will owe it in the future. But this is also change. So what does change mean? Well, change is basically if negative, the company is paying debt faster than it is taking on. So Apple is paying off its debt faster when it is negative. But if it's positive, that typically means that they are taking on more debt 
then they are paying back. So that is operating cash flow. Let's go ahead and look into investing cash flow. Oh, and you'll also see these other categories. Same thing applies to them. If you plan to invest in this company, you like what you're seeing on the cash flow statement and all the other statements, and you're like, this looks like a great company. At that point, go to the 10K and 10Qs and find out what these other categories entail and dig deeper so that you're not blindsided when you choose to invest in the company. Close this category up and open up investing cash flow. Well, what is investing cash flow? Investing cash flow is the amount of cash that has been generated or spent from various investment related activities. So the first category that breaks down into a bunch of subcategories is cash flow from continuing investing activity. This is just a net cash investment by the company, but there are other things. So net PPE, uh, net intangible purchases, net business and net investment purchase. Okay, so what are all these different subcategories? So net PPE, well, this is purchase of plants, property and equipment. Okay, so plants, property, and equipment, this is usually used to expand the business. And if a company buys more property and equipment and all those other things, of course, it's gonna be a negative cash flow. They're investing back into their company. Then you have net intangible purchases. Now this is Apple. Okay, Apple buys things, okay? They they have to. And seeing this being negative is a big sign saying, go look at the uh, 10K and 10Qs to figure out if this is true, but more than likely they are not just zeroed out. Okay, now what does it stand for? Okay, this is intangible purchases. This is copyrights, trademarks, patents, and goodwill. Apple is all about those things, okay? They are all about copyrights, trademarks, patents, okay? You try and copy something like that, you will have a lawsuit on your hand. So we all know that this is definitely something to look into on their 10K and 10Qs. Uh, I won't do it right now because right now I want to just get through it and figure out, do I even want to go into depth on this company? Next, we have the business purchase. Now, they spent 1.5 practically billion dollars on businesses, okay? And that's not, that's not uncommon for big companies like Apple, okay? They're gonna be buying companies like crazy because they wanna expand their business and buy other businesses that will help in their business ventures. Something to look out for, how much relative to investing in themselves are they putting into other businesses? If they are putting a ton of money into other businesses, you should really focus on what, how much are they putting into their own business? Well, if I'm gonna look at that, I'm gonna look at say the PPE, okay? PPE, they put $8.3 billion. So they invested way more money into their own business than they did into other businesses. So that's a good sign. Well, also on top of that, how many shares have they been buying back as well? Do they think it's worth buying their own shares? And you'll see that in the financing cash flow, but we'll look at that in just a minute. So next you have net investment purchase and sale, which is basically they either bought or sold some of their investments uh, that are not in these categories. And it looks like for the longest time, they've been selling a lot of these investments, okay? Back here in 2019, they sold $58 billion worth of investments, $5 billion worth of investments. So they've been selling a lot of investments and it doesn't look like they've been buying very many investments lately. So that is interesting and something to kind of take into account. It's like, why aren't they investing more? Well it might have something to do with them investing back into their own company, which we'll look at in the finance cash flow section. Other, again, don't look into other unless you actually really feel like you want to invest in this company and you'll find that information on the 10Ks and the 10Qs. So let's go ahead and close this category. Again, all this information you can find on the cheat sheet. If you're confused at what a definition means or something is, you can always look at here. So let's go ahead and jump into the financing cash flow. So financing cash flow, well, what is that? This is the cash flow used to fund the company. All right, so this is them putting money back into their company, financing and all those other things. So let's go ahead and break that category down on the cash flow statement. So cash flow from continuing financing. Okay, we just talked about that. So this is net issuance, payment and debt. So what is that exactly? So net issuance payment of debt. So this is repayment or taking on of new debt. If negative, the company is paying off its debt and if positive, 
the opposite. So let's go ahead and look at this. So what it looks like is it is positive. So to me, that is telling me that they are basically selling debt. They are, ta they are taking on more debt to finance business ventures. That is what I'm saying. What I wanna look for here is, are they taking on a lot or a little? And from what it looks like, 2.9 billion compared to their, their operating cash flow, that's not that much. So that's not gonna be that big of a deal for me. It looks like they they bought back some of their debt here in 2019. That's normal. So eventually they're going to have to pay back this debt. Then uh, repurchase of their own shares. Okay, this is net common stock issuance or repurchase. Okay, so I, I'm not going to go to the cheat sheet for this, but it looks like they have bought 71.7, almost 71.8 billion dollars worth of shares in their in the trailing 12 month period of time okay and this is this is good this means that they they find a lot of value in their company they are they're just buying back shares like crazy so that's telling you wow if they think that it's important to buy back shares of their own company now that means to them this is cheap these are cheap shares maybe you should consider buying more shares too. Now, does that mean you should buy the shares? Well, not necessarily. And then cash dividend paid. Okay, so we all know what a dividend is. It's paying the shareholders for owning their company and basically investing in their, their company and they give out a small token of gratitude every quarter or annually or biannually. And so they gave back shareholders $14 billion. So that's pretty cool. And then when you got the other category, same, look at the 10K, the 10Qs, only if you actually plan on investing in the company. So let's downsize this real quick and we'll come back a little bit to the finance cash flow in just a minute. But end cash position, okay? So we come back to the cheat sheet and cash position. This is kind of self-explained in the title, okay? This is the end of the cash position. So you got change in cash, beginning of cash position, and capital expenditures. So let's look at this. Change in cash, okay? So in the trailing 12-month period of time, they have lost $17.1 billion in their cash position, okay? Not necessarily a red flag, especially if they... Um, are buying back shares, okay, beginning cash position. So they began their cash position with $52.1 billion. Okay, so losing 17, that's quite a big hit, but at the same time, you know, uh, their ending cash position is gonna be around $45 billion. That's still enough cash to go around and they can make up for it, especially if they're having an operating cash flow of $80 billion a year in the trailing 12 month period of time. And it looks like it's just gradually going up over time. Um, so that's a good thing in my opinion. This isn't in the end cash position, but capital expenditure is also known as CapEx. So what is a capital expenditure? Well, this is PPE. Okay, and so if we were to come back to the investing cash flow and break that down, net PPE purchase is negative 8.3 billion. We come down here, negative 8.3 billion. So same thing. And then the free cash flow is basically taking, and you can see it on the cheat sheet. So this is found here at the very bottom. The equation is operating cash flow plus PPE. Extra information, this is used to purchase stock and pay dividends, okay? And a note to self, negative yet still paying dividends and repurchase of stock is no bueno. Let's turn this into a red flag right here. Red flag. And put this in red, there. Red flag, negative yet still paying dividends and repurchase of stock. Now free cash flow is used to go right back into financing cash flow. So if we come here and look at this, we would take our operating cash flow right up here of 80 billion and we would subtract our PPE of 8.3 billion. We're left with $71.7 .7 billion. So them investing back into the company financing okay it looks like they we can downsize this so they bought 71.795 billion dollars worth of stock okay that means they pretty much put their entire free cash flow back into their company but also their loss 
was 14 billion, okay? And we could see in the end cash position, the change in cash is 17. So bulk of that was paid out in dividends. So do I, th do I find that interesting? Yes, why in the world would they pay out dividends by taking a loss for it? Well, you know, you gotta take a look at the 10K and 10Qs, but if you like what you see in these last three financial statements, then it might be interesting enough to go ahead and look at those 10Ks and 10Qs and figure out all the whys behind all this information. So that's how I personally go through a cash flow statement as fast as possible pretty much to find those companies that I want to invest in. Now, don't just go based off of these examples. Once you find a company that you actually really like and want to invest in, go into the 10Ks and 10Qs, figure out those other categories, and then also fill in those blanks that you were like, what is, what is this exactly in the cash flow statement or income statement? And then once you figure all that out, then you're ready to invest in that company and you won't be blindsided when something comes up. Anyways, that's what I got for you guys today. If you enjoyed the video, please consider smashing the like button for the YouTube algorithm. Helps the channel grow, helps people like yourself find my videos here on YouTube. Also, if you wanna follow my financial journey and learn from me, please consider hitting that ugly mug over to my right. Looks just like this one, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.